In fall of 2017, as my car flew onto the sidewalk, I braced myself to the steering wheel, preparing for an accident that nearly took my life. I was less than a minute away from my guitar lessons, but instead of blistering my fingers and learning a new song, I was laying in a paramedic stretcher. Out of all the things that I could possibly be thinking about, I remembered a neuroscience lecture from earlier that day, the one from Dr. Benjamin Miss. He was lecturing about how retrograde amnesia can occur after very traumatic events like car accidents and fight or flight situations. But I cannot quite remember the rest. It was a total blank. All I could remember was my car flying onto the sidewalk, the deafening emergency sirens, stinging red blood dripping down my arm, and how it hurt to move literally every part of my body. It was as if I had become a textbook example for what Ben was teaching. The day that I was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury was the day that I appreciated my cognition more than ever. The unanswered student question of, when are we ever gonna use this? was finally answered. After I spent some time hijacking the backspace button on my computer, I managed to narrow down all the experiences I am grateful for here at my time to two. First, the educational opportunities. And second, uncertainty. First and foremost, I am inexplicably grateful for standing here today and not being another car accident statistic. I am grateful for psychology and neuroscience department faculty, the board of trustees, President Rockmore, administration and faculty, family and fellow graduates. Thank you all for being here today. A huge thank you to Benjamin Miss for teaching your classes with such contagious excitement, an excitement that leaves me questioning whether I have free will every time I leave those double doors. Looking out, I see a sea of faculty members that have made an impressionable experience on my heart. Michael Cassins, Carrie Tucker, and many more. IVC, thank you for providing us with the opportunity to succeed through many U-turns and speed bumps in our paths. Thank you for making educational moments so interactive. The ability for us to be able to touch and dissect a sheep brain, attend speech and debate tournaments, Go to MUN or Cybeta conferences, sports tournaments, getting random free food in the middle of the quad, <laughs> or looking at the free food and wish you had gotten that ISIVC sticker. <laughs> Petting puppies to de-stress during finals week and Snapchatting 10 of them. All of these resources have expanded our educational journal above and beyond what a classroom or textbook could ever offer. Not all community colleges are blessed to have these opportunities, but ultimately what has helped us most are the financial resources, grants, scholarships, aids. Let's face it, investing in your education is very expensive, but we are still able to get an education because of all the selfless, caring individuals, such as scholarship donors, that connect us to resources that benefit the student body as a whole. Now, let's go back to what I meant by uncertainty. Remember when you were little and your dad or mom told you to stop picking your nose? Or they told you to say thank you and you would do it. You stopped picking your nose. Well, at least not to their face. <laughs> and hopefully you started saying thank you. I mean, it's awesome you were taught that. I definitely don't want your boogers within five miles of my vicinity. But the biggest limitation in that lesson was that it taught us that if we do X, we receive Y. And in that, we become too comfortable with certainty in which everything is understood. We expect everything to be predictable and known. As much as you wish life worked that way, this mentality is adequate up until the time that you stop picking your boogers. Once you start putting on these big ridiculous gowns, and going out into the real world, the skill of coping with uncertainty becomes increasingly important, arguably more than being smart or the piece of paper that you will receive today. I think college teaches us how to be comfortable with not always knowing the next step. It's a paradox, really, teaching us how to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I implore each and every one of you to ask questions you're scared of asking because you think you're gonna look dumb. 
I implore you to take that class that everyone said is so hard or to change your major even though you're afraid that you wasted time if you change your major. We spent a lot of time crying over wasted time. You never wasted time. You just learn what doesn't work for you. Congratulations. We live in a society where instantaneous and certain answers are a must because with technology, we have so many answers at our fingertips. It is important that we preserve uncertainty because it allows us to be malleable to change. Let's stop marrying ourselves to cookie cutter plans and paths to get us out of here in exactly two years, five minutes and 43 seconds. Let us not negate or shame exploration. There is no shame in being an unconventional college student. Let us embrace impermanence. Let me give you an example. I came back to classes that I thought were so not me because I never thought I was a science person. But I sat down and I kept coming back and soon came to realize once I stopped shutting myself off to things I was afraid of and intimidated by was when I opened a door that I had kept walking away from. Graduates, we have survived many long and hard nights to get here. We have survived nights of over-caffeination, finding parking spots, maybe even walking all the way to the dirt lot because you couldn't find a spot close enough. And you passed every cumulative final that you wished wasn't cumulative. Or maybe you failed that exam. But your failures have actually served as tests of adversity in disguise as a bad day and red scantron marks. This is just the beginning of making new memories, new ex-lovers, new disputes that will either help you grow apart from others or grow closer to them. You might not know where you're going, and that's OK. Or you may know exactly where you're going and terrified of whether you're doing the right thing or not, but you can't Google a question like that. Or Bing, who uses Bing? Raise your hand. <laughs> no judgments, it's a safe space here. I'm here to tell you that you never know what life is gonna throw at you. But honestly, when do you ever truly know? I can say something cliche like, it'll feel right. Or a light bulb will magically go off on the top of your head. But I'd be a liar to say that because I am here to tell you that the light bulb does not ding off the top of your head contrary to popular belief. And that sometimes doing the right thing doesn't feel right. The right thing is usually unpopular, inconvenient, and painful, like slowly ripping off a Band-Aid. Michael Jordan once said, limits like fear is often an illusion. Don't set limits on what you can or can't do. I have come to realize once we stop thinking in boxes is when we open the doors for things that will challenge us and terrify us, but most importantly, help us grow. Graduates, congratulations. You have graduated Irvine Valley College, one of the best community colleges in Southern California, and you have opened a new chapter of uncertainty. Let your newfound awareness manifest into an informed voice for those that are voiceless, and give power to those that are powerless, and give coffee to those that are currently dozing off. <laughs> yeah, you. It has been an honor for I, Glyle Kashani, to represent your class of 2018. Congratulations. <laughs>